voting was meant to reflect these numbers. Okay. So that was a, uh, and I now want to go to the questions Mr. Mahat uh, posed to you, and, and, and I want to, you have the form that Mr. Mahat introduced. Uh, that he, uh, he left you in the Mr. Mahat was uh, generous enough to give us. I just want you to compare that and what forms have been filed so that we can clarify this to the courts. That's true. Mr. 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 Form 32A, and then he asked you to read the, um, this, the direction in this form immediately after the particulars. Just read that, and then I'll show you something in the response by the second and third to compare that. Uh, this is to confirm that the voter whose particulars are indicated below was not identified by the electronic voter identification device, but was identified in the printout of the register of voters in respect of the above polling station. So this form 32A Mahat took you through my Malay friend Mr. Somane is with regard to identification through the printed copy of the register. Is that the correct? printed register. Okay. Well, I'm showing the witness so that this form is because <coughs> it was whether he understood that but what you are referring to was something different. Well, the forms produced by the second and third in the response of the IEDC, not, these forms were produced in the affidavit of Noor Gedi Arale, and they all relate to a Jill West constituency from a lot page one, I just want 162. 162 of the response to the very end. I'm a lot, there's a distinction, so I also want to to see the difference between those forms and then I can ask you a question. I want to see the particular form. Just look at this form that has been produced by IBC so that I can ask you a question. Well, I'm referring you to a clear page um, where that explanation is given. I have to page 186. Uh, we can look at page 186. Is that clear? 186 is it has on the right side. Yes, we can see this one. Of This is the returning officer for Jill West. IBC. This is the, the document by IBC explaining the disparity numbers. But Hassan, can you read? I know this is a little bit clear. But any of the forms, well, they're all identical. But compared to form 32A, this form is different. Yes. This is to confirm that the voter whose particulars are indicated below was identified alphanumerically by search in the electronic voter identification device and was validated using the supervisor mode in respect of the above polling station. Okay. So this is a form IBC has produced to verify, and you can identify which polling station this was. This was Macoral Prime. 
This, this is a macaron in which constituency? Wajir West. Now, all these poems were produced in respect of Wajir West. And the particulars, just confirm what does the particulars of the water indicated, you don't need to read because that's confidential information. Is that yes. correct? Yes. And then the name, the witnesses who uh, witnessed this uh, uh, supervisory remote are indicated, is that correct? Yes, they are. And the name of the presiding officer? Yes, it is. Okay. Is this form, I'm giving them here for you, is it identical with form 32A? No. It is not. Is that correct? No, it's not. And the two, let me speak on my speaker. So, that form, that one that IBC has produced, is deployed or used when the presiding officer validates any voter on the Kim's gate. Is that correct? Yes. Now, explain to the court why, what is your complaint regarding us from paragraph 34 and paragraph 50? What is your complaint regarding Wajir West and the same polling stations in paragraph 31 and 32 regarding that process? This particular process. Yes. Clarify to the court what your complaint your Honor, is. Uh, I want you to uh, <coughs> uh, look at uh, Kara polling station. Just an example. That is at page 29 of the petition. Page 29 of the petition? Yes. Page 29. Yes, at paragraph 50. At page 29 of the petition, where this complaint comes in. And the, and the use of things is 34 and 50 to the same thing. Your Honor, uh, at a polling station, Supervised voters is 400. Uh, the vote cast is 473. For all the candidates? For all the candidates. All of them? All of them. Yes. The first caller now. Which one? Are you on page 29? Kara, the second from the bottom. Okay, yeah. Yes. Uh, the number of supervised votes is 276. And uh, you deducted this from two, that will remain. So then supervised, you need to assist the vote. Those voters when you call. No, that's supervised voters. The second call. Yes, okay. Supervised voters, yes. Supervised voters. Yes, 276. 276, yes, my lord. Why that? Yes, it's 276. And the first responding under 241. So, about the only persons who use the film is about 197. So, I'm correcting my calculation. Roughly 197. 197. Yeah. So more than half of the people who voted were supervised by the presiding officer, is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And see, this is not the only one. In fact, Your Honor, all the stations that I gave you earlier, uh, where uh, there was a high voter turnout and a high percentage uh, going to the first responder, there is a concomitant uh, high level of supervised voting as well. Supervised voting, okay. And you can look at the response by IBC just to finish on that point. 
they have produced forms for some of the polling stations, but not all the polling stations. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. They actually, Your Honor, I think on average, uh, we just showed you a window. And this window was about 2,000. Uh, the amount of uh, the ones we calculated. Uh, IEBC gave us only uh, uh, about 100, around 100 uh, responses. This was for the forms, the forms, the forms itself. They only gave us 100 out of approximately 2,000. So your complaint regarding this polling station, it does not that it was high what a time, but there was a high incidence of supervised voting, is that correct? That is it. And which is different from what Mr. Mahat was explaining to you yesterday, or clarifying to you regarding the alternative mode using the printed copy of the register, is that correct? That is right. Now, and finally on the Kim's kit, just clarify to the court why your complaint remains valid. You have seen the affidavit sworn by the ICT <coughs> expert from the yes. IPC, is that correct? Yes. And his explanation is that this could have been as a result of <coughs> Kim's kit not being closed, is that correct? Well, Your Honor, I actually, uh, I'm not an IT expert. It took me a long time to understand. But uh, the, the trend yes. of his thought was that the Kim's kit was left open and that uh, people were coming to vote and uh, putting their print uh, and being given the ballot boxes and the, uh, therefore the Kim's kit would not identify that individual because it was open and was used by somebody else at the beginning. Just uh, this, in, in, in that one replied to your affidavit and further affidavit, who was the IC, ICT expert from IBC? IBC, I, I don't have the document now but it's Yes, I've given you a copy of the affidavit. You can just mention him by name. When he comes here to testify, we'll ask him to clarify that position. Yes, I've given. Yes, you can use the affidavit. Just compare with the Yes, but this is Martin Washera Nyaga. Yes, Martin Washera Nyaga. We are all reading the same document. Yes, sir. That's the same. Yeah, it's Martin Washera Nyaga, the ICT expert, uh, responding to the issue about the disparities between the numbers um, identified through the Kimstick and the numbers in the form 37A and the dashboard. I know the explanation, I know the witness will come. I'm just asking the witness to comment on that in terms of the questions I was asked is at paragraph five and six of the, of the affidavit of Martin Bashir and Yaka. So, Dr. Hassan, just to finish on that point before I take you to the further affidavit so we can neatly close that issue. Yes. You have identified those polling stations where that this wide disparities in the numbers at paragraph 50, and all this, most of these polling stations are in Wajir West. Is that yes, correct? Yeah. And at paragraph 51, you also show the impact that if this votes were disregarded, how many, look at the last column at page, 50, uh, page 30 of the petition, how many votes will be disregarded by this honorable court as an election vote? 6,941. 6, yes, sir. Thank you. That's in addition. 6,941. And Dr. Hassan, so we can, we can finalize at this point. You were asked that you have set, as, uh, you have presented your case with your witnesses and IBC as a respondent. And there's a clear issue with supervised voters. How would the court be able to verify how many people passed through the Kim's case if the court was to verify that these people actually were identified biometrically and they were voted? What is your request to the court regarding that Your Honor, difference? Uh, the only way 
الكتاب الاسبوني السواج وفيها إذا دي بري من كيبسكيت in fact the election materials including the kibskit and the kibskit would then have the picture of the individuals who voted uh, using this method and them holding their ID so that the ID can identify them with their face as well as the form 32 as and, and the form 32 as that, form is that uh, they filled and this and signed form. by the agents. And the form produced by IBC, which is a different version of the form that you Exactly. Thank you. Dr. Hassan, I want us to just take a break from that, and then we'll, we'll, we'll come and sum it up. I want us to go to uh, uh, the issue of uh, postponement in Eldas, and the issue of undue influence. That we cannot be part, and then we compare that with the complaint you had regarding for list and the violence that was there. Um, you were taken by Malari Prime Minister Mwanza through the postponement by IEBC and he asked you to read paragraph 9 of the statement by the chairman. I don't know if you have it there, but I can read it to you. Uh, this was the update. I think that's what he was calling it on the day of the election. Yes, the statement. Yes, we have Due to security concerns raised in the DAP constituency, and four police stations specifically, he, means, he names them, he names them. Are, yet uh, are yet to be opened. The Commission, in, in, in consultation with the security, to address the security commission is in consultation with the security to address the issues raised. And lastly, um, I want you to look at paragraph six because that is. Um, Paragraph 6 at the page 36. Yes. Uh, just look at paragraph 6. As you are aware, election for gubernatorial elected positions in Kakamega and Mombasa counties and for the member of the National Assembly from Kashiriba and Pokot South in Pokot South constituency are postponed to a later date to be announced through a Gazette notice. Okay. Now, this was in the same communication that you are referred to. And I have the following questions for you for you to clarify to the court. Yes. What 
is your complaint regarding the adjournment, let's call it, because that's adjournment, uh, to the next day, uh, which, is, which in normal parlance is just a short, like the way the court adjourns. That is to the next day. Now, what is your complaint regarding the adjournment of the elections in uh, that constituency vis-a-vis -vis the gubernatorial election? Um, is, your, is your complaint, just clarify the court, that they were postponed or the effect of the postponement? The effect of the postponement, Your Honor. So it, you're not contesting that IDC could postpone? No, not at all. That is within their mandate, is that correct? But what is your complaint uh, regarding this postponement compared to what you and what I've shown in paragraph 6? Your Honor, uh, you tried to explain yesterday. Yes, and you're uh, told you'll come and explain yesterday. So this is the moment. Uh, <laughs> that uh, the insecurity of the Wajir East Yes. Not even one year is the Koro Harad was. Koro Harad was. Yes. Was a, a one week process of uh, where voters were attacked, vehicles burned, bicycles burned. The headquarters of Koro uh, Harad was, was attacked three times, in fact. Uh, on 6th. 8 in the morning, 8th in the evening, and 9th in the morning. And that's all in the OB. And, and witnesses are testified. And the witnesses are testified. Yes, that's right. Yes. Uh, and Your Honor, that is the only time that year that that insecurity occurred in that uh, war. It was once that there was an insecurity in a town which is not far from it. But uh, so if you consider the two uh, situations, uh, one was actually uh, much more insecure than the other. And which is more insecure? Uh, the for a parallel war. For a parallel compared to, to compared to that, that, where the incident, the violence yes. was at the time uh, at, like, at the city of the government. It should be home the institutions which are required to manage this process. To to if they are going to uh, postpone one. They postponed the other as well uh, for that matter. But that, and I did, and I did raise the matter with the county uh, attorney office. Yes, clarify to the court. You were asked yesterday whether you wrote a letter. Um, how did you communicate? Please clarify to the court. With the county attorney officer. Uh, well, uh, uh, in retrospect, maybe uh, for purposes of legal matters. It's better to write a letter because you authenticate. But we did. During that time, nobody has time to write letters or sit in front of a typewriter. Uh, you are running from one place to the other. So I did directly go to the office of the county returning officer. I went to the OCPD. Uh, who is the county returning officer? Is uh, Mr. Mohammed Ali. He's a proper respondent. Mohammed Ali, you know him? Yes, I know. And you met him? And I went to Mr. Onsando, the OCPD, <coughs> uh, with the East, um, himself, and raised the matter uh, to him that we should uh, consider this as urgent and we should stop this process. So IBC was aware of the security incidents in the US, yes, in Korokara yes. But the election in that ward or in that constituency was not adjourned. Not adjourned at all. And lastly, now, how did it affect the election in terms of the adjournment in Aldas? First, just clarify to the court. You, you're, you're not saying IBC did not power. But what is your complaint uh, regarding those two? I've shown you paragraph six. <coughs> um, just to clarify to the court yesterday, you said either they were to, they should have contained. Sorry, uh, you have you had two you have two complaints. The first, yes. What was the first one? That what should have IBC done in your complaint? The effect. Let me talk about the effect. Yes. What is the effect? The first? effect was that uh, the other uh, words, the other. Uh, constituents. Yes. The polling stations were going on. Work was going on. They closed in the evening. People on which date? On the 9th? On the 9th. Yes. 
people uh, uh, were submitting through social media the reports. So the votes were counted and announced in the police station and, and, the, and the cluster on, on, the, on the walls of Maswata. And the pictures, in fact, pictures were being sent of what is clustered on the wall. Uh, uh, in particular, actually, four, four, four constituencies. Yes. I must also indicate, Your Honor, that with Geo West, in the two words that I'm talking about now, the reports were also delayed. They did not come. They did not come. The only reports which were tricking in were the ones from the Nure Ward and the Al-Masajida Wards. The other two wards were not coming. Yes. coming. But having said that, yes. this was used uh, by the first respondent and his agents to mis or misinform the community on the issue of clan dynamics so that they benefit themselves. Where, 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 uh, where was this misinformation? In which constituency? In Aldas. In Aldas. Yes. And you, uh, you confirmed to the, uh, to the judge that of the court, the voting in Aldas was one day later, is that correct? Yes, one day later. As a result of the agenda. And so it was that delay then enabled that misinformation to take place. Is that, is that your opinion? That is true. Now, that was the effect. And your complaint, if IBC was to conduct a free and fair election, what is your complaint? Um, I've shown you paragraph six where the gubernatorial election in the same document in Kakamega and Mombasa was, 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 uh, was postponed only for that election only for Kakamega and Mombasa. Uh, maybe the reasons were different. Fiona. But out of the six elections, IBC was able to postpone one election. What is your complaint regarding how IBC treated what you have? Uh, Your Honor, count. the right thing obviously was to do was to postpone because this the confrontation was brought about by issues concerning the MPs. Yes, yes. yes you said that yesterday. I said that yesterday. Yes. If they were going to just do Eldas, they should have postponed the county, either continued with the county, uh, uh, the gubernatorial election and elections. Election. Yes. The senator, the, the governor, the others, and postponed the, the, the MPs, because MP. those are the ones which brought the conflict. Or otherwise, uh, postponed everything in the two, uh, in the six uh, last, yes. and Bojia is, uh, I mean, uh, 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 Should they have just only uh, postponed for those two of the whole county so that you won't that is a day? That would be because if you, con if you postpone uh, the work, then you are postponing for all county elections. So the, so the IBC have those two options. They to did. postpone the way they did in Kakamega and, uh, and, and Mombasa, as it said, in paragraph 6, or allow the voting for the gubernatorial election to go, to go on, on the 9th. Is that correct? That would have been correct. Yeah. As a result of that failure, there was an impact on the election. Is that correct? Certainly. Thank you. And Your Honor, may I add? Yes. Um, I do hope, Your Honor, that uh, if this is allowed, people will make it a habit to create confrontation and conflict so that they can uh, delay their voting in areas where they are weak and bring in this information later so that they can uh, part their votes through information. Or, or, or even affect the outcome. Thank you. In terms of the numbers, um, I just want, you are taken by my friend Mr. Omanza, <coughs> and I want you just to clarify to the court. Um, a few, and Mr. And Mr. Mark as well. I just want to give you those polling stations, and you, you have a look at them, and just comment regarding why that was not a comparison that can be met with the votes that you are complaining about in Waji West. I, I don't, I, I, I think- so yesterday. Yes, um, I, I hope I have all the numbers, but I, I want to give you the ones for Waji East. The small polling stations, I'm calling them not small in size, but in terms of the number. Each polling station is equally important with this process. Uh, but I'll just, um, I, I, I'll just give the notes to the judge so that you can remember them. <coughs> Yeah, that's fine. Well, the 
Hassan, when you're dealing with that issue of material thesis, so we can finalize, you are explaining something about the three primary schools you were asked by Malay and my friend Mr. Mahat about the numbers in those polling stations in the peri urban parts of Koro Haram Ward. You remember? I think there was a. I do. I, uh, let me just get the primary school. Uh, it was Riva. And uh, I, I just want to get it was a demonstration, but it's not a problem. I just want the witness to clarify as a resident of that why that was not a correct comparison. I'm just trying to bring up the this. River primary and Stavari was there all in one area. So I'm going to cut out one. I'm going to get so the three primary, uh, the three polling stations, um, as we remember, those river, I think that's a river primary, Kansa primary school, yes. and Stavari of primary school, I believe it's also a school. Uh, where are these three polling stations located? And you know, you're being asked that if there was violence, how come it did not affect these polling stations? And then we come to the question about, and then I take you to the issue about where are they located in terms of geographically, and why that was not a correct inference in terms of what caused, um, what, it does not explain the numbers that Mr. Mahat read. Start from this part, these polling stations, where are they located in the Jewish constituency? Uh, two of them are located in the There's a military camp there, and there are urban areas, very urban areas. A military camp by the Kenya Defense Forces? Yes. Yeah. Right yeah. And most of those people are urban. But also correct is that I did not garner 90%. Uh, well, you want to add it, the three of us, maybe we have got a 90%. But uh, neither did I get me. So the first is Kansa Primary School. It's a military camp. That's in Koro Harar Ward. Yes. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, and there, the the number, the turnout was 444 out of 648. Yes. Uh, ex uh, out of 648, sorry, 444 out of 648. Yeah. This yeah. is next to a military camp. Is that correct? Yes. Was it affected? Clarified to the judge by the incidents of uh, insecurity <coughs> in Koro Harar. Uh, I can tell you for a fact that on the morning of the night, when the agents, the employees of IBC refused to go to Borokarad uh, and Kasa and River, they essentially negotiated and uh, they had agreed at about one o'clock in the morning that they would go. And they were given a, a military escort, security escort. That security escort was actually blown next to us. And the officers who were in that vehicle were brought to Nairobi West Hospital. And any of you can visit them even now. There are still, some of them are still there. We have visited them. Uh, but the people who worked in that person, and the people who live there, uh, there's a little place next to them. So they have security yes, they do. that secures their participation in the voting. Yes. Um, and is Kasa, that's Kasa Primary School. What about River Primary School? Also, River Primary School. There's a military. There's a, uh, there's a special force uh, station there. And and there the the town was 314 out of 42. Yes. And the last primary school you were asked was River Primary. River was primary. They have two streams. So this and the last one was Tawariyo. 
You were asked a question by Mr. Mahat, and explain to the, to the court how was the election material brought to Gor uh, Yeah. It was airlifted um, by military or by IDC hired? By, I don't know. Uh, but it was airlifted. By, uh, Ordinarily, in the previous elections, how has the material been brought? Clarify to the court why this year it was different. 2017, it was, it was taken by road. <coughs> It was taken by road. Uh, would you clarify to the court why this time round they had to uh, um, utilize the use of choppers to deliver election material in Kora Farad? The security that existed. Yeah. So that firms up your complaint about the security yes, that was which has been confirmed by IPC. Thank you. Mr. Mahat then tried to explain, or he asked you, that this is expected, or that was a question, because it's near the border. Would you clarify to the court why that inference was, was incorrect? Your Honor, uh, first of all... You are trying to explain, he said, explain yes. today. Now, this is the opportunity. Your Kora Farar is about 30, about 30 to 35 kilometers from the border. Which border? You know, we have... The Somali borders. border, sorry, Your Honor. Yeah, because the Somali border. But Mahat did clarify which border. It could have been... Somali he said border. there's Busia border, Uganda border. It so there's a, so, if this is the Kenya-Somali border. Kenya-Somali border, yes. But it is no, or not the only word that is, uh, by the way, Your Honor, even in Wajiru, there are many other words, there are about three words in Wajir South that are next to the border. And there are many more towns nearer to the border than for Harar itself. If you look in, for Garissa, there are 16 words, Your Honor, that are along that road. Three of them in Garissa, four of them in Wajir, and nine in Mandela. None of them, except for Farah, had incidents of violence during that period of war. And insecurity. And insecurity. So this was an exceptional set compared to the other it was. Yes. And, and that's why your complaint that it was not treated in the same way as it does. Is that correct? Thank you. Now, I want us to move to a different area in terms of the questions that you are asked by my learned friends because it's important for the judge to understand uh, why that complaint was, uh, was raised. And I now come back to the just the general question, then I go to the specific. You were asked. In your affidavit by Mr. Mahat Somani, you had raised all these complaints touching on this election and how it is mismanaged. Just explain to the court, you're trying to explain to the court that this, the primary evidence was in the affidavit of your witnesses. Just explain, did you, uh, um, in that, in, with respect to that question, how did you or how did you establish the complaints that you have in this petition and explain why you used the agents and the other candidates who did not testify? With your permission, Ujiri is about 58,000 square kilometers. It's actually 10% 10, 10 of Kenya. Just repeat that figure, 58,000 square kilometers? Kilometers. And it's 10% of uh, uh, the country of Kenya. Yes. Uh, I certainly cannot be everywhere, and that's why I allowed me to, to employ uh, agent. Okay. Even that law is standing your honor. It is the mandate of the responsibility. And that's why we pay tax to, for, to provide so that IBC gives us services, that they give it to us a fair and just and accountable and verifiable election. Even if I didn't have a, a candidate, I mean, a, a agent. It's their responsibility, primary responsibility. That's not with the standing law. I have, uh, there are 610 uh, <coughs> polling stations, yes. and we sent agents to many of these polling stations. Uh, and 
The purpose of this agency was to send information to me and to the Italian sector and to raise their concerns so that we can uh, try and resolve those issues. Yes. Uh, and that's why I received all this information from them. And the ones I brought to you are the ones who submitted their evidence uh, to you. In good time to find the petition, time. is that correct? Yeah. yeah. You were asked today by Mr. Mahat, and I just wanted to clarify to the court whether, so I can go down to the area, to the other as aspects. Um, regarding the complaints about, so I can go back to the figures uh, with, uh, before we go to another area. Um, you first referred the court to the evidence at page 65. Yes, the repetition. <coughs> I just wanted to start with that witness, <coughs> the one uh, at Cara, just in terms of the, and then we go now to the, your complaint, just identifying uh, he was at the polling station, yes. what is it? That Adel Abdelrahman used to be dead? Yes. Is that what's Is that what's Cara? Yes. Yes. That's at page 65 of your petition, is that correct? Yes. Uh, so this was, One of the witnesses, although an agent for a, a, a different party, an MCA, so he was an independent witness as far as this contest is concerned. Yes. And you had referred the judge to, he testified here, you referred the judge to paragraphs uh, 7, 8, and 9, um, and 10 as well, yes. of, of his affidavit of expedition 65. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Now, you were asked whether you had any other witness. I want you just to clarify that to the judge, so very quickly, without having to read. Uh, the other witness was a candidate. Just the next page, page 70. Ibrahim Mohammed uh, Abdurrahman. You also testified here. He was a senatorial candidate on Kano, uh, on the Kano ticket. Is that correct? Yes. And you also testified at paragraph 8 regarding that was a complaint about to the robber, is that correct? Yes. And people being given more than one body, is that correct? That's right. So that is another witness who testified about the, the multiple issues of ballot papers. The as well, yes. yeah, and I'm taking you back to, to the, the father witness In the father list at page 75, this Ahmed Bashir Abdi, he was also a contestant under the current ticket, is that correct? Yes. And that complaint was in paragraph 6. And seven, as well as paragraph nine. Eleven and twelve. Is that correct? That's correct. So you did tender evidence, but only of agents as well as of candidates who contested in this election and who had an opportunity to witness, and they came and testified here, and the court will consider their evidence. Is that correct? Now. So that I can close up from the questions that were being asked by my friend Mr. Mahat as we come back to the issue of the or I just want to show you the forms. Now, in your father affidavit, the one where Mr. so that we, we don't lose sight of what you say. Mr. Mahat, just confirm paragraph four. Uh, how this agents and how this information was given to you. I just want you to clarify two things. There was a big a paragraph four, a three. Paragraph three, you speak to deploying your agents across all the polling stations in Wajir County. Is that correct? Yes. Or the father affidavit. Well, this is paragraph three. And paragraph four, this is the question you were asked by Mr. Matt. Um, would you be kind enough just to read paragraph four so that then you can clarify that? The images of the electronic water identification dashboards, the case kits, and a number of organizations shared with me by the other as well as the other information. 
show that the total votes, votes cast in some polling stations are asked to be voted in the respective form by self. They were more than the total vote of Tanner as per the Kim states in this polling station. This ground was pleaded in paragraph 94 of the petition, but I inadvertently did not include the images of the Kim scheme dashboards that was the basis of that paper. Now, just clarify to the court that this complaint was in the original petition. It was. And it set out in paragraph 34, is that correct? That is right. And in this paragraph of the final affidavit, we give the source of the electronic dashboards that and summary of statistics that your agents were able to get from the IBC. That is right. Now, I referred you to the further affidavit that IBC filed with the permission of the court. Please confirm to the court as we close in this as have they controverted that evidence you've given in those kits, those dashboards? Have they said that that's not a correct copy? No, that's a not, uh, that information is not the information in their possession. You see, uh, for them to, uh, to bring evidence other than what is here, uh, then they need to inspect it. But this is not the question correctly, uh, Dr. Hassan. They were given an opportunity to answer. When you file the father affidavit, you remember the court uh, very graciously gave them leave to file a father affidavit, which they did within 24 hours. And an ICT expert from IBC saw an affidavit, and this is the affidavit of Martin Oshela Niaga, the one I gave you. Um, you are being challenged about the authenticity of those, uh, that summary of statistics. My question is, in this father affidavit, in response, has he given any other information contrary or different from the one that is in those summaries? No, he has not. What he has done is try to explain the disparity in numbers. Is that correct? Yes, I did. And you are asked, and I want to capture this right now. You are asked about paragraph 7, 8, 9, all these uh, polling stations. Look at paragraph 4 and clarify to the court. Look at the sentence that starts um, for the additional, uh, that the total votes cast in some polling station. Just read that and clarify to the court in paragraph 4 the further affidavit. Yes. What is the complaint regarding all these polling stations? That's images of the electronic vote identification dashboards in the Kim's kit and the number of polling stations. Um, well, it says show that show the total. Different. Yeah, so show the total votes cast in some polling well, stations. Different from that seven, yeah. Yeah, uh, in those, and this was the Indian paragraph 34. Yes. In, in your own words, what is a complaint regarding those images that you've shown, and which are now in, in evidence in court, and what is recorded in the form 37A? In simple words, which is higher? Is it the 37A or is it the 37A? Uh, so 37A has higher numbers in terms of the vote cast than what the Kim's kit shows. That's right. Is that correct? That's right. Now, what is the effect of that? Let's clarify to the court why that is a serious problem in this election petition. We affirm that this was the mechanics that was used to uh, inflate numbers for the first respondent. So if the Form 37A has higher numbers, it is your case before the court that those numbers, it, they were inflated. Yes and that affected the outcome of the vote. Right. Is that correct? Yeah. And there's evidence in those schemes that has not been controverted by IBC. Is that correct? It has not been. And what is your prayer to the judge and to the court as an election court regarding all these contested uh, polling stations where we have been able to demonstrate that the numbers were different? Well, uh, we have proved to the court that uh, there was unlawful uh, irregular process that took place yes. in Ojia County to inflate numbers for the first respondent so that uh, he could take uh, the leadership of Ojia. And that the, the <coughs> prayer is that uh, the Honorable Judge invalidates that process. Yes. 
And in terms of the application that is pending before the court, this is sufficient basis for the court to order for scrutiny. I hope it's more than sufficient. Thank you. And that answers that is paragraph 5. All that you have set out between paragraph 5 and 11. Is that correct? Yes, sir. While we're there now, you are asked repeatedly by my learned friend, um, Mr. Mahat, and I think he, ought, uh, he was about Bila Dulamin, which is at page 57 of yes. this father affidavit. <coughs> I just want this complaint, I just want you to confirm to the judge that Bila Dulamin was in your petition, even when you filed on the, I just want you to confirm that. That this was one of the polling stations you complained about, and it was part of the petition. I believe this was part of that four. Would you kindly turn so I can find the ones? Page 16 of the petition. Page 16 of the petition. Page 16 of the petition. Yes. If you look, it starts over there. And this complaint starts at paragraph 34. Is that correct? Yes. And if you look at the complaint about the Ladulamin, is that turn to page 16, this one that I have. That the form 37A shows 390, is that correct? Yes. The what's cast by the kick skit shows 258, is that correct? Yes. While 258, that stick on that, kick skit 258, yes. while the first respondent has been given 265, is that correct? Which is seven, seven, seven votes above the kick skit. Above the kick skit, forget about the 390, above the kick skit, is that above correct? Above the kick skit. Yeah. So this information, this statistics were already in the petition. They were. And that dashboard confirms it. Yes, it does. Now, who has custody? You know, you're being asked about um, Kimskit. Yes. Were any of the candidates allowed to keep any of the Kimskits? No. Malone, we're together at page 16. Yeah, you see, Malone, if you, that, 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 that information is important. Kimskit is 258. And the first respondent had higher votes than what is in the kids' seat. 265. Dr. Hassan, you as one of the nine, eight or nine? Nine. Nine gubernatorial candidates. Did you have custody of any of these kids' seats or the ICT material that was deployed by IBC? You do not have. And after the voting closed at the Lagoon Amin Primary School and the other polling stations that you identified in your petition, who kept the Kim skits and all the ICT material? IBC. It's IBC. So you have no idea where they keep the, the, this, this, this dashboard and 
where the kids kids are. Yes. Is it one of your prayers that I be seen to produce all these kids kids for scrutiny by the court? Not just the kids kids, but all the election, all the election material. Yes. Thank you. And when that team skit comes here, we'll be able to establish whether it is malfunctional. Is that not, not, is that not wrong? Thank you. Dr. Hassan, I have one or two more areas to go, and then my mm -hmm. friend, Mr. Sala, will close it. We There's quite a number of questions regarding the force. I just want us to go back to the figure so we can we can uh, we can read uh, uh, properly. You were asked several by Malani friends different ways regarding. the numbers that you complain about from paragraph. And remember your numbers start at paragraph 45, sorry, paragraph 27, about the rejected ballots, and then all the way to paragraph 50, is that correct? Yes. They're different complaints, Yes. Uh, but all regarding numbers. Yes. Just by way of cl clarification, Dr. Hassan, you're a medical doctor. Is that correct? By yes. Profession? Yes. Do you have any background in statistics or yes. yes. I I have a master's degree in public health, uh, particularly in epidemiology and biostatistics. So statistics, you're quite at home with statistics. Yes. Speaking for myself, I don't have to speak for my learned friends. Lawyers are going to study numbers and accept them in their fields. But that now tell the judge. And explain the court. You have a complaint at paragraph 33 about how these numbers were affecting, and then when you come to paragraph 37, which you have to be read with 34, you are being asked by Mr. Mahat that the number 934 was statistically insignificant. Would you clarify? And, and, and this, this is the numbers regarding these case kids, which is important. You remember you were asked that if you look, at, <coughs> and I think when Mr. Monda asked you to clarify that, when you look at paragraph 34, you gave the total number of votes that exceeded the people identified by the Kim skit. Uh, you see that at page, it starts at page 15 of the petition. Yes. Yes. You gave the total at page 19 as 934, being the total number of voters who are in from 37A that exceed the numbers identified by Kim Is that correct? But can we clarify to the court, if the judge finds that those voters exceeded the people who are biometrically identified, what is the actual number? As set out in that in that in that in that table yes. regarding the votes garnered by the first respondent and the votes that you garnered, because all of them will be disregarded. All will be disregarded. So what is the number? Just turn to page 19. 934 is the number that exceeds the king's seat. Yes. But that is not the operative number. What is the operative number? Because they asked you, is 934 significant? And you can look at, even without doing any um, complex mathematics, just look at the column next to 934. There's a figure there for the first respondent. Can I, with your permission, actually consider all of them? Yeah, so, we'll, so we, there's the first number we have gone through at paragraph 33. Yes. So we had reached 26, 917, yes. and all of the was at this Now, the number, because that's the summation now, after considering the numbers in the Kim's case, what is the figure there now? Uh, we can just start with what is in the petition in terms of the figure, uh, the numbers affected for the first respondent, and then now explain you clarify the court. These numbers are 6976. 6976. And the mine is 1308, 1308. You are saying it is? Is 
is the first respondent is six thousand nine hundred and seventy-six. And the petitioner is one thousand three hundred and eight. Among one thousand three hundred uh, three hundred and eight. Now, if those numbers are disregarded, what would be the impact on the votes that were declared by IBC? That uh, they would be subtracted from the original uh, numbers. Yes. But, Your Honor, I have uh, done that yes. uh, mathematics and I've included uh, the discrepancies between the Kimsky and form 37A yes. for each uh, constituency and uh, yes, the issues about failure to use Kipsky or deploy Kipsky, yes. those numbers are also included yes. uh, and the supervised voting that we talked about are and the others, yes. I have added. I have deducted all of them from Myself and the parties and the first respondents. Those are the parties before the court. Yes. The parties before what is the effect of those numbers? The effects, the effects, if you deduct from his numbers, the first respondent's numbers, the total for him would be 15,324. That is the number you're giving Mr. Mahat Somali, but I didn't let you explain. That is the number. 15,000, I want the court to record it again. 15,324. Out of the 35, 33 declared by IBC. Yes. And what will be your result? 24,148. You will have a margin of 9,000 yes. if all those votes were invalidated. Is that, that, is that correct? That is true. And that would have a serious impact on the outcome of the election. Is that correct? I don't I love those numbers did not come up because the ground and those numbers are not really in conversation. So it's quite strange that we're not getting by the 15,000 or something. Hello, uh, friends, my name is Fred, a very good friend, Mr. Hula. It's not correct, they're pleaded. I gave him the page 19, I gave him page. These numbers, the witnesses clarify, that they start. And they're updated. They start at page 12. I can give the page. Yes. All these numbers, he's only given the cumulative tally of the different complaints. There's no, you know, cross examination on that. So why, why are you giving him the well, My yes. friends are not listening to the questions. I have notes that are very detailed. And I can even tell you who asked the questions. They say, even with biostatistics, yeah, you can try to use these numbers like that. The question so was. Stick to our process exam. I don't know why my life friends are getting uh, agitated. The question was whether it was whether 934. I, I did not hear him add any numbers. Yes, yes. Well, yes. Why is he adding, why is he adding now? No, the if he added it and he wanted him to add again, that is different. You all remember, the question was this. I did not hear him add numbers. Did he add numbers? I did. In fact, he was given the numbers, then he was told. Was he adding numbers? You yes, was not adding numbers. yes, he was. And he was stopped and told you you would give that explanation to your advocate. Yes. And this came from, you know, I start from where the question was. Is 934 significant? And I was asking him to clarify. Well, that was maybe, the question. Maybe you should have stopped at that because we didn't add all these numbers and the judge touched it. So what is this? If they didn't add, my lord, is that my mistake about theirs? Because as they're showing what the significance is of, of, the, of the numbers, <laughs> the question of significance. The, the question it, is it, yes. It, it means it was overtaken by events. No, no, it, no it, at that time. But now we, the door is, remains open, my lord. They cannot now shut that door, as Mr. Mwanda always reminds me. <laughs> they opened that door, my lord. They opened it. Is it significant? And I'm sure it is significant. Go by the pleadings. Yes, my lord. Sorry, and my lord, it's them. actually the pleadings. And I was checking that so that. Go no, by the pleadings and your submissions. You yes. Add and stop, track, you know. yeah. We'll do that in our submission. Just confirm to the judge at paragraph 35. And 33, you have shown yes. that this was having an impact at every stage of your compliments to the judge. Is that correct? This, Your Honor, the tables that we gave for each event that we complained about from page 7 to page 30, and we provided the tables. Yeah. Uh, initially, what was happening is that there was no cumulative deduction. But now I've done the cumulative deduction. You are doing it in the region. No, no, no. Because I did, I did, Your Honor, when I was asked by uh, Council uh, Mahat 
and he talk, stopped me and told me to ask this judge uh, my, my counsel. My Lord, if I may, if a witness digresses from the question asked by counsel and answers his own question, that does not mean necessarily that he came up in, in cross-examination. That issue did not come up in cross-examination. The witness simply digressed, advocate for IADC, corrected him and limited him to whatever he asked. So that issue of 15,000 did not come up. It is not pleaded. So we cannot have the issue of 15,000 being brought up. You go by the pleading. Yes, sir. Thank you. You can, you can address those issues. My, my, my Lord will do that with submission. My, my client will give me all these figures. I will. They, they are already pleaded, my Lord. Um, the fact that they are pleaded. We will not be given figures. We are already there. Yes, yes. They are not there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's all right. And, and lastly, you also could just confirm to the judge that the other impact you were asked is pleaded at paragraph 37, and the totals appear at page 21 and paragraph 38 of the petition. That's the third set of figures. Uh, you see, I'm trying to be able to hide from these figures. Is that correct? So, my question is, if I the court, did this irregularities, as you, as you complain about, and the failure to ensure that the voting in all these polling stations was in accordance with the law, did it affect the outcome of the election and the votes returned by the IBC? Yes, sir. That's why we're here. Yeah. And uh, on the numbers, the last question, you were asked whether the discrepancy and the failure to include the rejected ballots, which are around 100 in the Form 37C, had any impact on the result finally announced by the county returning officer. It what did. is your answer? It did, Your Honor. It did have an impact. Is that correct? Yeah. And it would affect the credibility yeah. of the result announced with regard to Wajir West. Yeah. And is it correct that this only happened in Wajir West in oh. terms of the Form 37B? Oh. Only the other five had the rejected ballots. Is that correct? Yes. So, among, although you have complaints about uh, different constituencies, the highest number of complaints is the regard to your West constituency. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
to validate this when we go back to uh, <coughs> and I'm not thinking about uh, 2027. I'm hoping that this will take us back to, to Algeria. With regard to uh, the plan dynamics in Algeria, uh, I know every uh, uh, aspirant comes from a specific uh, subclub. Um, I do. I, I come from a fairly large subclan, but there were three uh, competitors. Four of them, but one of them uh, did not campaign. Uh, in Nigeria West, Your Honour, and also before I go, I do that. Uh, you cannot win using your clan alone. Uh, so you must get a running mate from another clan. So that you can get your votes across the board. Of course, the other issues you don't just depend on that. Uh, the platform that you can based on, uh, what the people think of, uh, about your characteristics, uh, the, your likability by every person, and how the people view you in Nigeria. Uh, those are important issues, not just that. But two important issues about who is your running mate and where you come from. Uh, I uh, chose the uh, running net from Ojia East, Ojia South, who gave me uh, 9,000 votes. Uh, the first respondent also got a running net from so where I got, and they got 4,500 votes. Uh, so the issue of deputy is very important uh, in, this, in this plan issue. In Ojia West, in Ojia West, in Wajia East, we had three active uh, candidates, but there was no deputy governor candidate in, in where the community had come from. Uh, in the community that the first <coughs> uh, there were two candidates, and two or three, I think. I'm not sure about the lady who gave a candidate in the last time. Is that, what, is that the question you asked? Yeah. I just ask, the, just narrow it down to the no, club. You see, the club. Yeah. that kind of uh, story is. Uh, so I don't want to you, you, you should be restraining the yeah. next Just in terms of the club yeah. dynamic yes. and whether it affects the outcome. Yes, it does. It does affect that. Yes. Now, and I think that in your original answer to Mr. Monta, he allowed you to explain, you did explain. Now, the, a more important question was asked by Mr. Mahat Somani is that from the complaints in your petition, you do not complain about Tarbaj, you do not complain about Wajir North, you do not complain about Wajir East, and I think South. Um, could you clarify to the court what your complaint? Is it that you're complaining in areas that you, uh, you got few votes, or do you, are you complaining about areas where there were irregularities. Just clarify that report. I complain about areas where my agents reported irregularities. So it's there not irregularities no complained to me, I did not complain. Even where the first respondent won? Yes. In in those other in all those other constituencies. Yes. And there were many. Yes. Yeah. And so your complaint is just not because of the numbers garnered, but how they were garnered, is that correct? How they were garnered are the complaints raised. Right? in terms of the process. Yes. the process. Thank you very much. And finally, Dr. Hassan, what are your prayers to the court as you conclude? This is your closing statement. Your Honor, uh, to affirm our confidence, uh, and we know they are right, uh, we want you to provide us with uh, scrutiny. Uh, and we, once you provide us with scrutiny, we know we'll go back to the ballot. Is, and lastly, in that prayer for scrutiny, is that, uh, <coughs> Mr. Mahan said, are you asking for scrutiny so that you can fish for evidence to support your petition, or is it an audit of what happened on the 9th and 10th of August? Uh, Your Honor, this, this uh, is an audit of where we think the problem was. And, and you've demonstrated that in your petition and your witness after that, is that correct? Yes. And lastly, are you asking the court to grant you the prayer set out at page 31, 32, and 
all the way to paragraph 34. In paragraphs A to J of the petition dated 7th of September, you ask him for all those prayers, including the prayer for posts. Yes. Thank you. Well, uh, that will be the close of the petitioner's case. Mm -hmm. Unless you have any questions for Dr. Hassan. Uh, that's where the petitioner will close with us. Mr. Hassan being the sixth witness. All of them will come take a hit break and at the start with the respondent's case. But for some time before we come back for prayers. Thank you a lot on behalf of the petitioner, uh, my, my friend uh, who kindly allowed me to give it, Mr. Salah. Um, we, we are grateful for the time given to my witnesses. I hope we, are, we close our case at this time. Unless you have any questions for the witness, that would be the close of the Thank you, Your Honor.